with even number of people at a, at a table. Uh, you, if, if I see already some people looking very scared, oh, I need programming experience. We have people, uh, this is a workshop that was the very first time given in a, in a school where people only had like uh, two, three weeks of programming experience and they did really well uh, and there was actually some person who was rather very, very new. So don't be scared, it, it, will, it will work out. Um, but like I said, we need computers, we need only per pair uh, one computer, but you need to be comfortable that at some point other people will use your computer and you won't be there because we're going to swap. Uh, so that's all. The, the other question, I think you asked the question, what tool do we need? The first pair selects the tool. The first pair selects the language in which we'll program. So I'll already guarantee you, you will write code at some point in a language you've never seen, except if you are the smartest person around the world and have programmed in any kind of language. That's okay. The, ex the, the, the idea is to experiment and to try out stuff here. Yes? Okay. No? No? Yes? A little bit problem. Okay. No? Yes? No? No? Um, Okay, better. Yes, thank you. Okay, so um, we need and we need to be kind of evenly distributed at the tables. So they need to be. So this is all very large table. This is a very small table. That doesn't work. We need at least four to six people at every. I prefer six people at every table. Let's see if we can make tables of six. So just yes. So and we need to have at least. Uh, so three computers at every table. Let's get organized into that. So, this, uh, so we need three more people here. So if, if the three people from there can move over here. And, do, and you two, you can move over to that table. If you want to do that, then it's six everywhere, I think. What again? Well, you need to have computers. So you have no computers at all? Okay. Okay, wait, wait. Oh, or you can bring it, that's even better, if you can get it. I've done this, I don't remember anywhere where, that we even did part of it on paper. So people programmed on paper. That's very interesting. You will learn a lot about the languages you work in. So that's fine. So let's, let's get our set up. Um, so we need we have one laptop here, one other there. We need, you have one of you has a computer? Oh two, but yeah, we'll need to make sure that this, these two are people. So you need one of you has a computer, no? Okay. We can work in threesomes as well if, if that works, but that will make it a little bit harder for, for swapping. Um who else has a computer here? You three are sharing one. They have. Okay. So. Okay. Then we need more. Then we need to deliver them papers. There's more people coming in. No, no, no. You need to be at the table, and you need to. Do you have a computer? Can you get it and get in here, or is that that would help us a lot? Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but you will need to, you know, anyone, everyone will code. That it's, a, it's a practical workshop. I have a theoretical part, but they asked me to do just a practical part. So we'll, we'll actually all code. Yes, you need a lot of computers. We need at least, normally we need one computer for two people who are in the room. So we need more computers. I'll explain in a minute what's the exercise. Don't worry too much about that. Again? Yes, yes, you can use paper. So if you want to use paper, that's fine. So we'll add more paper. Do you guys have computers? Okay. Let's let's see how it works. I'll, I'll assume right now that we're kind of okay. 
Here. We'll probably have these two gentlemen move over here because that's otherwise it's it's that doesn't work for two for, for the exercise. Okay, let's do a show of hands. Who has um, who has done pair programming before? Just a number of people. Okay. When this exercise was created, there was originally created. Um, this was originally created uh, for a high school that was said we want to teach our, our students a little more about programming and pair programming and some ex uh, some uh, things from the agile world. So they asked me to do that thing. And what we've designed is a number of exercises. I have moved the thing to start. Um, what we've designed is a number of very small exercises, that, like you will see, like a few lines of, of uh, explained in English, yeah, that you need to program. You can take the whole 90 minutes to program it. You can be done in five minutes. We have a lot of different exercises. The goal is not to be the fastest or anything like that. If you think the challenge is to code, you're wrong. I will swap pairs, or we will swap pairs every 10 minutes. It's called extreme promiscuous pairing. It's like, wow. Before you even thought you started, some people, if you have a very slow computer, your computer might not even have been booted in 10 minutes. Remember these low computers? I, I do. <laughs> so that is extremely uh, fast. Yeah? Of course, that to make sure pair programming doesn't mean that we'll pair every 10 minutes and full swap. The idea is to give you a similar experience in one hour and in 90 minutes that you would have if you would pair a lot during a day or a week. So that's that's the goal. Uh, so. They're already starting. You're trying to get ahead, Marit. Oh, sorry. I'm just, you know, making sure I have my tools open. Yeah. Take off ten minutes. Yeah, we will. That's okay. The, the first that brings up a really interesting thing. The first ten minutes, it's okay if, if you're still looking for stuff like that. Uh, you will get. Some people need ten minutes just to read it. Yeah, the, the, the thing. It's it's not that hard, but it's English. If English is not your native language, it's okay to take the time. We'll swap after 10 minutes, that means one of you will move, I'll, I'll explain how we'll move, I'll, I'll, I'll coordinate that. One of you will move and one of you will stay. Then 10 minutes later, the second person will move, and so the, none of the people who originally started coding will be there. That's all why I said, uh, what I would ask, open an editor, open a browser, so people can go in the browser and let's agree with each other, we don't open anything else, we don't look at anything else, we just stay into the editor and that one browser is open that if you need to look something up. Uh, the people who are programming on paper, for example, you might look things up on, on, um, on, on your phone if, if you need to do that kind of things. You might worry a little bit less about uh, what editor tells you from uh, mistakes that you make, uh, but it might really make you think, because typically when you work on on an editor, the editor helps you out with all these things, languages, that you don't have. This is why you learn a lot more about the language, maybe less about the exercise. But so, what you will notice is very quickly, a lot of you will, yeah, the first people who worked on that won't be there. So you need to figure out a way also in the code or whatever, this is the direction we're going. You always have one person who stays and then we'll swap. You'll have to, if you're finished, you just raise your hand and we'll give you different kind of exercises. So it could be that you do an exercise very quickly with a pair and you'll do start a new one. It could be that uh, at the, during the whole 90 minutes on that computer, they will only work on one exercise. That's fine as well. Uh, the idea is the last 15 to 30 minutes, I'll see a little bit how it goes, that we'll do a kind of retro to, to talk about what we've learned and some of that stuff. Are there questions? Probably a lot, but are there things that you really want to know before we could get started going? So just to clarify, you only need the editor and a browser. Right? Editor and a browser, that's it. Okay. So on paper, we can just pseudo coding. Is that enough? Good enough? You write the code that you want to write, or that you think that is solving the problem. You could do it. Th that's the interesting thing. The first two people on a certain exercise decide on how and what to do. You decide on the language and that means that if you're very good in Java, you could start in Java and the next people who come in might not know Java. Okay, that's part of learning. Um, I, I, and it's, it's okay because what I've seen already, I've seen people really quickly grasping some basics in, in some of these things. 
So you will learn some basics of a certain programming language. You will learn some basic of programming in general if you've never done it. I've done it with testers. I've done it with DevOps. I've done it even with managers that thought they were able to code, but I haven't coded in 20 years. And so it's not always easy, but you'll learn. That's okay. So what we'll do, so you can now start opening your, uh, your, uh, your um, environment to code and decide on what editor. We'll start distributing um, little exercises. Sorry. Heke, you can help me. Have you got all open start? No spaces. Yes. Um, at every table, there should be at least one of these, but not more. Just so one person at every table. Uh, Yes, okay, sorry. I, yeah, I don't have papers. I need to. They need to be different exercises at the thing, so that's why I'm looking. Uh, okay. And you only need to look at the, the, the lowest number right now. There's two numbers, so if there's two pages, it's just the first one. They printed it right the first one. That wasn't good. No, uh, no, you cannot do it. Yes, sorry. Um, I'm still working, so I just want to do... You're, you're good? Do so you need a second example? No, a second example. That's right. No, wait, it's that was... Who else doesn't have a paper yet? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll explain in a minute. So before we, before everyone has a, every pair has a paper. One, and everyone has a pair. That's also important. No. So I will ask you to join this gentleman because he's alone. So I just cut a team. You need one paper. Okay. Let me. Okay, there you start. Okay, it's good. I'm going to take that. I'll explain to you. So this is a problem. Um, yes, or you can do it to ask for anything you can And you can try to solve a solution. Right things go to It's not hard, not easy, but it's possible. <laughs> I don't think it's recommended. <laughs> Thank you.
Page. If you're finished, you just tell me and we'll give you another assignment. Okay, but wait a minute. We said 10 minutes, so now is the moment we're going to swap pairs. Even if you're finished, we're going to swap pairs. It doesn't make sense to give you a new assignment and then swap pairs. Yeah? So, how does that work? Could I, could I have everyone's attention, please? How does it work? The person who's on the most, so with every pair, with threesomes, we'll, we'll have to work it out in a minute, but with every pair, one of you is on the right side, right? This is the right. This is right. <laughs> just to make sure that we agree on the same right. Yeah? So that means, I'll, I'll just show here, that this person who's on the right, yeah, he'll move to this pair. So you start working, not smart, <laughs> so I can show you. You start working on this computer, and you gentlemen, you move over there, you're moving with Marek, and you move over here. The court moves with me, or the court stays here? Thank you, very good. The, the, the court, that's true. The person who stays, stays with the exercise. Yeah? So you move, so you, even if you solved it almost, you think you almost solved too bad, it's moving into another thing. So, and now we do that, and we stay at the same table. We move now, we have one minute to move. So you need to move there, and, and I, you, may, you move from three pairs to two triples, right? So you swap. That will be harder in the next exercise to swap. We'll do it here. So, yeah, in the table. So you move over there, and you move over here. Okay, uh, oops, it's moving again. Um, so this is the second time we're going to move. Now the first, sorry, stop coding, stop coding, it's break, it's relax, it's 10 minutes tense, now it's a little bit, okay, so we're now going to move again, uh, typically how we do that is that the person who stayed before will move to the left, now we, we have to, and, and stay at the same table, you need to, so you need to go there, but unfortunately we have uh, only two groups there and then they, they will go back to the, Oh, for the first time it will my left. Yeah. yeah, okay, for left, okay, so now you can do that, for this time, so we'll do that. So move to the left, so the person who stayed there, move to the left. So, you move to this place, you keep staying. If you're done with this, let's do it again. Let's first see how people are... Are you? Uh, well, if you work with three, one of you, with just two of you, you stay. Okay. Have a problem because we have a team member who left. Does does this ever happen at work that you're there and so, so oh, somewhere so somehow we need to figure out. So I'm going to ask one of the people who's working with three to join there. Huh? So that way you have a pair from a completely different department, let's put it like this. Okay, so we're done, we're, we're, we can start. You're done, okay, let's, let's see. Uh, let's start the timer and I'll give you a new exercise. Um, that's another 10 minutes. We're going to do again uh, shifting to the right. So the first person who moved the very first time will move again, except if you're with three, then you have to figure out who has not moved yet and move to the right. Uh, and here we will, I uh, know you're two pairs. I'm going to, wait a minute, two. I'm going to ask a pair of you to just swap, swap over here. That will be easy. Can I have you two? You just move here. Both of you with the computer and with... Uh, you just move here and then you can do the swapping. 
So it's uh, the first person who moves, you move again to the next one, again to the right. So you you moved, you just moved, right? From this to yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. So, but you stay, but you stay. You always stay one time, except the very first one. Uh, both of you are new? Yeah, you solved one problem together, you got a new one, but who, who, who came here last? So you stay and you move on. No, but the computer stays. So you are going? Yes. What do you mean with stop? Is that you don't find the solution? Or it's no, no, we, we, we have any solutions, but what I'm thinking is another 30 minutes we have in this session. Maybe we can we'll, we'll have a debrief at the end, so sure, we'll, sure. I just want to have a few more. Sure, uh, sure. We'll, we'll have a debrief, so, be okay. careful. And I already decided to have the debrief longer than I usually have, so, okay. so we'll have a debrief. So now it's, it's again moving to the left side for the people who move to the left side. Uh, so the, the second you move, yeah, you need to move to the left. So I don't I don't remember anywhere who, who else moved. But the people who just sit down, they need to move to the left. That's basically it. And you move here, and so, so yeah, I don't know, because this is a table that's moving all the time. So that's fine. One of you moves to the left and the other stays. So there's one person who stays and one person who moves. Very careful about the table. To continue coding, I know you want to finish it. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll stop here. Can I, can I have your attention? I have a few questions. I wrote them. I'm not going to show them because otherwise people will start thinking about all of them. But one of the questions I have is, who, and just do a show of hands, who has introduced themselves every time to the pair? They said, hello, my name is... Yes? Every time? Uh, no, okay, not, the, not when you go back to the first pair. Huh? It's an interesting question because we forget to do this so often. Huh? There is an interesting book that's called The Checklist Manifesto that's about um, in, in, in hospitals and stuff like that. Turns out, in hospitals, they don't have stable teams. So they do surgery with people they've never done surgery about. Like, like maybe once or twice every year, they have the exact same team doing surgery. If they start that surgery by introducing themselves and just saying, hi, I'm Eve, and who are you? The number of deaths drop by 10% or something. <laughs> wow. wow. This, okay, this is lives. Well, maybe you're not writing code that is so important, but I hope you're not writing code for airplanes, especially not the one I'm going to take tonight. <laughs> but this is, this is insane. So this is something I've learned and I'm asking all the time. There's actually, I've never seen so many hands when I do this exercise. So this is already a very great group. Thank you very much. Do your applause yourself. So this is great. But just take that with you, that you, that you keep doing that. You actually did it um, yourself, I forgot so that. You another you session yesterday. So you uh, sure. Another question, who wrote unit tests today in this exercise? Oh. One person? <laughs> ah, a few more. Okay, so you... But of course, uh, I hope all of you tested the code and executed it. It's a little bit harder on paper, I know that. Uh, I, I could ask who compiled it, Let, let's not go there. Uh, Marit, can I? They, they keep learning. <laughs> Is there something you want to share that's important? Uh, yeah. There was, I'm pretty sure there was a bug in the logic, and we spent the 10 minutes on debugging that. I still want to know how to do that. Okay. okay, so I'm sure they will send you the code and you can fix it. <laughs> You're a tester, right? <laughs> okay, um, I'm asking the unit test because some of the exercises were continuous exercises. So a lot of the exercises were just completely independent, but some of the exercises were a second exercise. Right. And of course, if it's completely independent, you can throw away the code because yeah. we're never going to change it anymore. But if you keep working on that, yeah, then you might need to be sure that the older one still works or not, depending on how the exercise, because some of the exercises are continuing building and then you want them to. Or some of them are like, this is one and the other one is another one, but we don't care about the first one anymore, but it still is important to, to learn some of these things. I'm asking this question because 
What I've noticed is I ha I've been working with developers who keep telling me all the time, yes, I know how to work perfectly, but management, they don't allow me to do that. Okay? Probably these managers are not in the room. These people that tell you that you can't write unit tests are not in the room. And still, a lot of you haven't written unit tests. You can decide here how you write and how you work on it. A lot of people don't realize that we're blocking ourselves from doing that. And you could say it's not important for here. I don't force you to do that. So if that's okay for you, that's fine. But if you don't tell ever that your management doesn't allow you to do that when you're not encouraged to do that yourself when you have. If you have, and the next time you do some exercises, try to think who's blocking me from not doing it. Because if you didn't do it here, it wasn't a manager. Except if he was looking over your shoulder and you were pairing with that person the first time, then I can understand. But just realize that. Huh? It's not a judgment call after all, but it's just learn that what is blocking me from doing that. That's an interesting question. Um, what are some of the problems that you had? Here, there was a problem with the keyboard layout that was completely different. Who had the same thing? Who had that? Yeah? So a lot of things. That, this is one of the things that does block pair programming. If you're working in an environment where people have all different kind of layouts, and keyboard layouts. I've been working with people from Russia. When they came to Belgium, they, we, we actually bought Russian keyboards so they could work. It was very strange to see people pairing with two different keyboards and two different mouses because you have to communicate really well because if people start to type at the same time, and it did happen, it did happen a lot. So you need, what actually happened is that it slows it down because you need to, before you start typing, you need to say, can I type? Because if you start at the same time, it slowed them down, but it made them much more sure about communication. They needed to be much more. Same thing with mouses. If two people click mouses at the same time, you get all over the place. It's, it helps a lot if you pair, if you can work on, in your own uh, keyboard layout. So if you work with, and, and it's harder now with, with laptops, because typically with laptops we might not work with, with, um, uh, with an extra keyboard, um, and if, but we can attach a keyboard to it. So with, if you want to do more pairing, it can help if you have an extra keyboard with your preferred keyboard layout and knowing how to switch between these layouts. So that can help. Uh, and no, wait, before, editor, who was familiar with all the editors you worked with? Because you probably worked in multiple things. Who was, uh, okay? So most people worked here today with an editor they never used. Yeah. Yeah. That's also something that is hard if you start pair programming. Right. I'm not saying everybody should use the same editor in the team, but you, at least you need to have some <coughs> conversation around it. I had a team where that, that I coached and that I helped with pair programming, but there were really some hotshots, hero developers that insisted we should all work, and the one said on Vim and the other said on whatever, and so we had four different keyboards layouts. No wonder they had troubles pairing together, because, and not just that, they also liked, of course, the typical discussions, taps and spaces and all these kind of different things. If you then work in the same thing, it's really hard. It's an, it's an important discussion to have. People throw away, uh, go away from that discussion because it's really always hard. And in the end, for me, most of the time, and a lot of people might not agree with that, but most of the time, what is decided is not so important. It's that there is a decision that we work on something similar that makes it a lot easier. I prefer to always work on the same editor, even if it's an editor I don't like, because I will learn new shortcuts and learn other stuff as well. So, but that's an important thing. Try it out, and maybe, maybe just two editors will work in a team as well if we swap a little bit. Yeah? But if it's five different editors, it will make life for everybody really a help because that doesn't work if you have because that, otherwise you will. And the risk is you will always pair with the same person, and you will end up with just being two that are exactly clones from each other. That might not help either. Uh, what are the other questions I had? Sorry. Oh, that's an interesting one. Who learned something about programming today? Okay, so not everyone. Who learned something in general? Some other things. I hope that the people who learn from programming keep put their heads up because it's, it's also anything. Okay, so that's already a lot more. Uh, who learned something? Um, or maybe let's give an example. Who, who, who wants to shout out something he, he or she learned? So, uh, I was, uh, you know, initially coding something which in C++, similar kind of problem, 
uh, when I paired with him with Python was quicker. Okay. So, yes. so for this exercise, Python worked. Okay, and you learned that from from him. Yeah. Okay. Is that something that you already learned before, or did you knew this? Okay. I don't know that okay. Uh, and uh, other examples, other things that you learned? Uh, first about the technical thing, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, pro uh, program we were writing in the Java online editor. So first thing I came to knew, I am a COBOL developer. Mm -hmm. So you can write something in Java and execute it immediately. So if you have some basic functionality issue, you can do it online. It, uh, like uh, instead of mainframe, we need servers, connectivity, and a lot of things. Okay. And second thing was the uh, mindset while working in team. So I was working in a team, which I was aware after 10 minutes, I will not be part of this team anymore. So whatever I am doing here, I should hand over to the team so that they do not struggle after I am moved from the Really, team. really important. Who worked on that while he was doing, thinking already, in 10 minutes I'm gone, or in 20 minutes I'm gone. I need to make sure that, yeah, so you work on So I see multiple people, not everyone, thinking about that. Yeah. That is something uh, I talked uh, earlier this week about uh, staff liquidity, the fact that we move things around. Yeah? Um, but that, that's important to realize some things. And we might think, well, I'm, I'm still here tomorrow, whatever, but you don't know. Anything can happen. So it's really good to, to share some of that stuff. A lot of people have the tendencies, and the smarter you are, this is really important for real smart people, which most of you are, I think, otherwise you wouldn't be here. <laughs> Uh, but for a lot of smart people, it's really hard because they want to keep a lot with them. Not everyone, but a lot want to do that. Because they will, if, if I have all the information, I, I keep my job because they need me, right? Yeah. That probably works. That's probably is right. Until that program is gone, until that problem is gone, and then they prefer to get rid of you as, as fast as possible because they know they will need you all the time. I have worked with a team where we had such a hero that everybody is working there as an external, I don't know, between seven and ten years, and they really tried to say, you need to spread knowledge, he never did it. I'm not saying he did it on purpose, I think it's because of a lot of other circumstances, but that didn't help. At some point, we really give him the assignment, now you need to sp start spreading your, your knowledge, because we really have a dependency in you. It still didn't happen. We fired him because of that. I had business all over me. They were like, you're completely insane because he's the person who's solving all these problems at night and blah, blah, blah. But they didn't realize that because he was solving it that night, he wasn't really thinking clear and was creating part of the problems. And indeed, the, two weeks after he left, we had a problem in production at night. It took twice as long to solve it. But after that, we never had that problem again. And like six minutes late, uh, six, uh, six months later, business came to me and really said, we really want you to thank you. We wanted to fire you because you took a very strong decision uh, and, and you had some bosses back, uh, making sure that you could do that. And it was the right decision. But it was a really hard call to do. And it helped. And what we saw in that team is that knowledge spread much more. After that, 10 people knew the whole problem. And that was much better. And what I've noticed is that the better you are at that, the better actually people will like you and keep you around for much longer because they know we will spread you. I had a person like a month ago leaving a team and so we, we started with a meeting like, okay, what knowledge do you have that nobody else has that we need to... Everything I know, they know. He just said for sure and the team looked at each other and, and he said, yeah, that's true. And so he could leave just, just like that because he was bored and for multiple other things but he wanted to leave and it was perfectly fine. And it, we saw that in the next two sprints, they did some really complicated stuff and they did it without them. And they were really proud, like, oh, we didn't need them. It, it, at first they, they thought, we, we can't tell him, but actually it was a really great thing of him because he spread that knowledge so, so hard. Um, okay, that's another interesting thing. Who was scared when I told you this assignment when we started? That you should start and, and start pairing every 10 minutes, having a, a different, in a language you didn't know? Huh? So, I saw a lot of people scared. You might not, some people might even be scared to tell them they're scared. I don't know. <laughs> that, that's possible. I don't know your culture that well. In Belgium, that happens also. But a lot of people are scared when you do the exercise. Yeah? And, and that's, well, I'm not really on purpose, but it's an extra thing that I think a lot of times we, we are scared. We're juniors and we have no idea what the exercise is and what language and with who will I do it. Uh, uh, okay, my computer, who will, who will work with that? 
uh, it, it's, it's an environment. I do this also with students, that's even worse, because you have to ask students who like to pull tricks on each other on computers, but it works. So I, I got scared when my compiler, my Eclipse stop, stopped working as soon as I started. Okay. <laughs> but that, and again, these things happen in real life as well. Problem is now we have 10 minutes to solve it. Yeah. Like what you said, let's start my computer up because I have 10 minutes, it should be ready. Yeah? That's, that's what you said kind of early in the beginning. That, that's, that's the normal kind of reaction. The goal was not to finish it. I understand you want to understand the bug and you want to know how it's going. Um, for that, what I can say is that these exercises, uh, I'll put it on Twitter later, they are completely written out in a, in a booklet that you can download so you can replay it at your company. There's some guidelines on how we did it. There is a, a story that's written out just about how a typical pair programming session could work in, in multiple different things. If you have ideas to add to the book, just tell us. We can we can add other things. Uh, a lot of so the larger exercises, for example, came from a group at, at the conference as well because other people thought they might be good to, to have some extra things there. Uh, let's see if there are other questions. Ah, yeah, from from everyone. So I would call you now all programmers here because you all programmed. Who who would have called himself a programmer before he came in here? He or she. A lot of them. Might, might, might feel more tester or something else, but that, that's the thing. That's also what makes people scared. I'm, I, I'm not a programmer, can I do this? What language will I work? You know, you can be both, you don't have to be just one. Exactly, well, that's, that's my goal. That's to say, you can call your program, it's not just blocks that is, you're just this or you're just that. Yeah. That's, you have been programming. Uh, that, that's the definition of thing. Um, I, you ended up with uh, some tables you started, I ended up with the starting pair. Is there anything that you learned from that experience coming back? Did you interact in a different way? You became more comfortable to work with because you had already other people, same thing for you? Okay. Other things that... Uh, so at least I could see that uh, my pair had picked up a lot of things. Wow! <laughs> so, you know, like it's new self-certainty, so it was awesome. Okay, that's, that's also really good. Um, who did review the code um, while starting with the exercise? So you, you swap pairs, and then there is some code. Who started with reviewing the code? <laughs> Repeat. I didn't hear it. Ah, this is a waterfall project. They will review at the end. So come back on Sunday. They'll review. <laughs> What I found was uh, uh, there were conflicts about the way of uh, implementing when mm -hmm. I switched it. So, because of the review or because it was halfway there. Yes. And then I thought of a different way of doing it. So and, and that's something that happens also a lot with pairing. They said when you join, you have, we, I, I'll, start, I'll talk for myself. I have the tendency to throw everything away because I want to do it my way, but that doesn't be doesn't help me entering a pair programming session. So it, it's much better to just first review and, and, and just learn from the code and learn from it and not change too much about layout, about whatever things. But it's, it's a tendency that's really hard. That's, I have that a lot and so um, I try to suppress it, to not do that too much, but it's something that is... That is yeah, what I'm talking about, something like data structure that was used was... Uh, mm -hmm. But even, even there, and I, I agree, that's even harder. Even there, um, if peop I assume that the people who worked with me before have worked on it longer than me just looking at it for one minute. And even if I'm really smart, that uh, I, there might be a reason for it. It's interesting for them to start asking questions. Why is this and why is that? Not with pointing, this is wrong, but more like, will you explain to me? Because I don't understand it yet. That's, that's the kind of questions, to, to just understand why is that data structure. And indeed, yes, there will be moments that the data structure is wrong and you have a better solution. Yes. Um, but if you have to throw all the way the code and have to restart all over, then we lost a lot of time. So, so one thing that I want to share my experience pair programming is when one of them is more skilled than the other one, the, the one who's, they can learn, one can learn a lot from the pair. Mm -hmm. So like for example, when I started in the first, point I was not having any knowledge of Java and Macbook so, so my pair helped me learn that quite yes. fast. There, yeah. there is uh, a lot of questions in the community, what is the <coughs> ideal pair? Yeah. And people have the tendency to think what you say and I agree, if you're a junior you will learn a lot from a senior. Yeah. Um, 
seniors, so there's multiple discussions. A lot of seniors working together, they can pair also a lot. Thank you. Um, what is really hard is what I would call mid-level people. You're not senior yet, so you're, you're kind of okay, but your ego thinks you're a senior. If you put two of these people together, you have war. <laughs> so that's, and if you, if you feel, if you feel that you have a kind of war, think about your ego. That's the kind of uh, advice I would give you. Because it probably thinks that you're better than the other person and it doesn't help you. Even if that's true. What I see with senior people and what I mean with senior people is that you also understand your own ego. I have a very big ego. I'm on stage here talking about it, so of course I have a big ego. Yeah? But if, if I understand that, what my ego is, I can understand that and I can try to let go of it and, and, and ask these questions and learn. Because that remark I completely forgot about talking about that part, and it's really important. So what I see, junior, junior, no problem. Senior, senior, no problem. Uh, Mid-level junior still works. Yeah? Mid-level senior works also because we know that the other one is, is better than us. But it's at the moment that we don't, that it's not really clear, and our ego thinks that we're the better, and the other person thinks the same thing, that's in trouble. And, okay, I'll do a very dangerous uh, um, shout out. It's usually men. <laughs> it's not always, so you don't hear me say that women never do that, but it's usually men. Maybe that's because of the masculine environment that we're in, but I see that a lot. And, but you can learn a lot also from seniors. And the, the, the most interesting uh, experience that the very first time we did this, it was in a school, and it was, uh, like I said, there were uh, uh, people from the first year, the second year, and the third year, so they did about, uh, the first ones, about uh, four to six weeks of programming, and the, the, the professors joined in. And the first person who spoke in the, in the feedback session was the head of the department, so that let's call it the smartest professor. And he said, I worked with a lot of students and I learned from each of them. And sometimes it was just a shortcut or something else, but he said, even these, and he said a few names, these two people, I know you've been programming just for a few weeks, I've learned something. So that's, if, if he, at, at the level, that he's in, doing that for 20 years, being the head of the professor. I assume that he's the, one of the smartest people about <coughs> programming, learning a lot. They were all working in the same language at that, at that level and in that first workshop, and, but even there he, he learned something. And it's a language that he was teaching. So that kind of thing. So you don't underestimate what, um, what, is, what I would call the power of the junior. As a junior, you can ask a lot of questions that seniors in, in teams are sometimes afraid to ask. Because we know that we should know it already. And, <laughs> and I, I literally see that I've, if I'm a, as a consultant, I might, be, I might be new to a company, so I consider myself a junior to that environment. So I ask sometimes a lot of stupid questions, and I can just see people in the room, finally somebody dares to ask this question. <laughs> I had it once, I'll, I'll shut up after that, we'll, we'll run out of time. I had it once that we had a very large discussion, people were almost fighting, Nothing with pairing, but uh, in, in a meeting. And I had an idea there was something not clear about the question. So I asked, could someone of, of you explain to me what this word means? And one of the two people who was fighting was saying, this means that. And the other looked at me, if that's your definition, I agree with you. <laughs> and the word we're talking about is product. So product, for one person it means the product we're selling, and that was everything. And the other one is a product, just the software. So it's such a similar product, uh, such a similar word, but if you don't know, but of course, we talk about product all the time. I have that definition, so I know very sure what I'm talking about. And all of a sudden, the other person, yes, I know. So all of a sudden, the other person didn't know, and they were all in the fight, and me, really, at the second meeting in that company, it's a very stupid question, sorry, I'm new. What is your product? I have no idea what it is. And I cleared up a fight that had been going on for 10 minutes, and probably weeks before that. So, thank you very much. I'll tweet the book link. I hope you'll you'll try it out. Spread it. Use it. It's uh, do it. Um, thank you very much. Thank you.